Hello everyone, welcome to Dr. Rajkumar Academy for Civil Services. Let us discuss today the Hindu newspaper of Bangalore edition. Along with that, we are going to discuss about Press Information Bureau, All India Radio and important vocabulary. The first article that we are going to discuss about related to the GS paper 2, your international relations, particularly regional organizations. So the SCO, Shanghai Cooperation Organization calls for multipolar world order as Iran joins grouping. So the multipolar world's order is in the global interest. That is what the major theme over the discussion. Leaders of the SCO said at the virtual summit which was chaired by our Prime Minister. So India in this particular area there was an agreement which given by the SCO which is known as SCO Economic Development Strategy 2030. So India refuses to join other members on China's BRI that is Belt Road Initiative of a joint statement given by this SCO Economic Cooperation. So the SCO grouping now add on with the Iran new you know now comprises with China India, Iran, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan, Pakistan, Russia, Tajikistan and Uzbekistan. These are all the countries now added under the SCO. Right, so this particular uh, summit uh, which is focusing on the area of multipolar world orders and also India is like refusing to take up uh, the you know, agreement statement uh, related to the BRI by China side as well as cross-border terrorism by Pakistan and China for connectivity projects that not respect sovereign boundaries of India. That is the reason behind refusal by our Prime Minister. Right. So this is your first topic of the day. Next topic that we are going to discuss under the personality in news. Personality in news. Alluri Sitarama Raju. Alluri Sitarama Raju in the news. Okay, right. So, what is the context exactly? This is personality in news regarding your art and culture or modern history of India. Right. So, Alluri Sitarama Raju, he was an Indian revolutionary involved in the Indian independence movement involved in the Indian independence movement born in the state of Andhra Pradesh the good part here is that from young age itself he get into the revolutionary activity so he born in the state of Andhra Pradesh he becomes sannyasi at the age of 18 itself and gained a mystical aura among the hill and tribal areas with his austerity, knowledge of astrology and medicine and his ability to tame wild animals. At very young age, he got discontent of all the hill people in Ganjam, Vishakhapatnam and Godavari into a highly effective guerrilla resistance against the British government. He became involved in anti-British activities in the response to the 1882 Madras Forest Act. Remember 1882? Madras Forest Act which effectively restricted the free movement of the Adivasis that is tribal people and rising discontent towards the British led to the Rampa Rebellion Rampa Rebellion and coincided with Mahatma Gandhi's non-cooperation movement add on to that Manyam Rebellion okay Manyam Rebellion so he played a major part as a leader in this rebellion and this was coincident with the uh, non-cooperation movement. So he persuaded people to wear khadi and give up drinking but at the same time he asserted that India could be liberated only by the use of force not non-violence. He was nicknamed as uh, Manyam Virudu which is known as a hero of the jungle by local villages of his heroic exploits. So 125th but anniversary was commemorated for Alluri Sitarama Raju, the personality in news. So, President of India uh, invoked the Telugu movie Alluru 
Alluri Sitharama Raju and the song by Sri Sri Telugu Veera Levara. Okay, so that is a, a take a wow and move forward related to the contribution of the personality. Right, so this is your second important topic to be focused. <coughs> so moving towards the uh, next important topic, we are going to focus on the editorial page. A macro view of the fiscal health of the states. So this article it is stating about mobilizing all together more than a third of total revenue spend 60 percentage of combined government expenditure and have a share in government borrowing that is around 40 percentage. So given the size of the fiscal operation of states an up-to-date understanding of the finance is a critical in order to draw evidence-based inference on the fiscal situation of the country. An analysis of the emerging fiscal situation of states by examining key data and state finance from individual state budget for 2023-2024. In this context, what you supposed to understand the components of government uh, budget. See, you know that type comes under revenue budget and capital, uh, you know, budget. But here they are talking about fiscal. What is mean by this fiscal policy? So in this article, we are going to learn about the fiscal policy of our country. Let us have a look. While knowing this background, it is easy for you to understand the, the macro view of the fiscal health of the states. So fiscal policy is the use of government revenue. Is the use of government revenue. Mainly government revenue means taxes but also non-taxes revenues. Government revenue means taxes also non-taxes revenues such as uh, you know, non-taxes means you can say this uh, divestment and loans and expenditure particularly spending that is influencing the economy of our state so though the fiscal policy the government of a country completely controls the flow of tax revenue flow of tax revenue and public expenditure to navigate the economy properly if the government receives more revenue than it spends it runs a surplus when if it spend more than the tax and non-tax receipts it runs deficit to meet additional expenditure the government needs to borrow domestically or from the overseas or from the overseas right so alternatively the government may also choose to draw upon its foreign exchange reserves or print additional money to handle the deficit okay so now the fiscal policy in india it is providing the proper guiding force that helps the government decide how much money it should spend to support the economy activities and how much revenue it must earn from the system so to keep the wheels of the economy running smoothly the fiscal is very important so what are the main objectives of the fiscal policy in India that is your major area to understand this particular article one is about economic growth one is about economic growth second one is about price stability third one is about full employment full employment so three areas to be focused as the main objectives of the fiscal policy in India economic growth means to maintain a economy growth rate certain economics goals can be achieved so we need to maintain a economic growth rate sustain then price it controls the price levels in the country so that the inflation is too high when the inflation is too high the prices can be properly regulated that is second one third one is about full employment it aims to achieve full employment or near full employment as a tool to recover from low economic activity these are the three important objectives of the fiscal policy in India so why India is like you know giving more importance to this particular policy one is in a country like India fiscal policies plays a key role in elevating the rate of capital formation in both public sectors and private sectors through the taxation only the fiscal policy helps to 
mobilize a considerable amount of resources for financing multiple projects by the government and this policy also helps in providing stimulus to elevate the saving rates elevate the saving savings rate as well and this policy is helping in terms of adequate gives adequate incentives to the private sector to expand this its activities so adequate input to which sector private sector to expand their activities then fiscal policy aims to minimize the imbalance minimize the imbalance in the dispersal of income and wealth so these are all the major areas to be focused in terms of fiscal policy to have an idea so now go through this article so that you will get a proper knowledge about what exactly they are talking right so moving towards the next article it is related to the child trafficking in india so what exactly the problem is you know about drug trafficking and child trafficking are more prevalent activity in the unfenced border of any part of the world coming to india what exactly that we are facing how we can overcome this let us have a look of the particular article what exactly it is stating that article of your uh, child trafficking comes under gs2 about mechanisms laws institution and bodies constituted for the protection and betterment of the vulnerable sections okay you know several case and several reports were in the government related to the trafficking so government to help combat child trafficking in border areas set up rehabilitation homes these homes will provide a proper shelter food clothing counseling and other daily needs for the victims the center has decided to help build infrastructure in the border areas to combat child trafficking and help in rehabilitation and protection of victims remember as i said this thing used to happen in the region of the borders india is a source as well as destination country for human trafficking the main source countries are nepal bangladesh myanmar from where women and girls are trafficked in lower a better life jobs good living conditions on the side so in this particular what are all the areas to be focused remember child trafficking is is happening because of the four reasons one is child labor you know about modern slavery modern slavery <clears throat> next one is about practice includes trafficking for a, for the purpose of sexual exploitation debt bondage and exploitation in armed conflicts as well and child trafficking manifest in the form of domestic labor forced child labor across the industries and uh, illegal activities such as begging organ trade and commercial sex purpose and also uh, worldwide worldwide this trafficking is like increasing in the terms of the border of different countries so prevalence of in india uh, you know according to the ncrb eight children were trafficked every day in india in 2021 for the purpose of labor begging and sexual exploitation right 95 percentage of the case were registered in the year of 2019 for the internal trafficking so the main reasons for the child trafficking in india poverty hunger and lack of work so we need to understand in the holistic way like how we can uh, Uh, like you know the government is focusing for example here in this article itself uh, they are talking about the trafficking victims in border areas will also be produced before the child welfare committees to declare them fit for avail availing sponsorship as per the mission vatsalya scheme guidelines so mission vatsalya is the central scheme focused on the protection and welfare of the children who comes under the trafficking right so apart from that the immoral traffic prevention act of 1956 the prohibition of child marriage act of 2006 the child labor prohibition regulation act of 1986 the bonded labor system abolition act of 1976 the general justice care and protection act of 2015 like multiple acts including posco also were focused in terms of implementing strict towards this trafficking issue in our country right so these are all the areas to be focused for this particular article moving towards the next one 
like that this article is talking about center state tussle over OMSs may take spotlight at food ministers meet issues such as restriction on the states in terms of buying food grains through the OMSs that is open market sales scheme fortified rice program and strategy for procurement of coarse grains and millets so what exactly this article is stating about so we need to know we need to know first what is this OMSs the so food cooperation of India from time to time sells surplus food grains from the central pool especially wheat rice in the open market to the traders and bulk consumers retail chains at predetermined prices so the FCA does this through e auctions where open market bidders can buy specified quantities of the grains states are also allowed to procure food grains through the OMSS without participating in the auctions for their needs so this aim of OMS is to enhance the supply of food grains ensuring the food security during the lean session and uh, you know thereby moderate the open market prices that is the purpose of this OMSS now there was an issue related to buying food grains through OMSS there is a restriction to the state governments so just go through this article so that you will get an idea because recently Tamil Nadu and Karnataka is issue, you know, facing the issue in terms of not able to provide the food grinds because of restriction imposed by the central government. Okay, next in this uh, article, you will be reading about FCI also, Food Corporation of India also. Just focus on that as well. And add on to this, today we are going to look into the spotlight. What exactly the spotlight is? Remember the whole day newspaper maximum focusing on the UCC. Okay, what is this UCC? Yesterday itself we discussed a little bit, but today I want to give you a little bit of spotlight towards this topic. UCC. See, the Law Commission recently decided to solicit views from the public on the idea of uniform civil code. Uniform Civil Code, which clearly refers, it is a common set of common set of law that governing personal matters such as marriage, divorce, adoption, inheritance, and succession for all citizens, all citizens, irrespective of what religion, irrespective of their religion. Okay. So now the constitutional provisions related to this UCS, UCC, the first constitutional provisions as all we know that is article 44 under your DPSP. So the 44th article of the constitution make a reference to the UCC. It clearly says that the state shall endeavor to secure for the citizens a uniform civil code throughout the territory of India. This is in the chapter dealing with your DPSP. Uh, therefore, you know, it is not uh, questionable in nature because whenever the state wanted to frame the policies or laws, they need to pick from DPSP. Next, Article 37 state states that the vision of UCC along with the DPSP is enshrined in the Indian Constitution as a goal towards which the nation should strive and it is, an, is not a fundamental right or a constitutional guarantee. So these two important constitutional provisions you need to understand. Now moving towards the next part, what are all the favorable arguments so far of uniform civil court? First we will discuss about favor then we will go for against. Remember the first one is about uniformity and reduce discord because the common code would enable uniform civil principles to be applied. Uniform uniform civil principles to be availed throughout the country that is one point second one is secularism and women's right women rights right you see would help end the gender discrimination and overall discrimination on the religious grounds and ease of administration 
ease of administration because it it would make it easy to administer the huge population base of india you know about population is also like you know more so it is easy for due to administration and ending the unjust customs and traditions in the society in the name of religion unjust custom and traditions so in a rational common and unified personal law will help eradicate many evil and unjust practices in the society right so these are all the example of favors what about against against of uniform civil code so hampering diversity and multiculturalism diversity and multiculturalism you know about india is like you know unity in diversity multicultural country right indian society has a unique identity in the form of being diverse and multicultural and unified law so violation of the fundamental rights violation of fundamental rights as well because the religious bodies oppose a ucc on the ground that it would be interference in religious affairs under article 25 25 of the indian constitution then also it may lead communal unrest in the country communal unrest in the country as well all india muslim personal law board stated that the laws pertaining to marriage and inheritance were part of religious so if it does happen means obviously there will be a communal unrest in the country okay so just uh, go through this so that you will get an idea and head of 22nd law commission the commission is headed by former karnataka high court chief justice rituraj avasti okay right the commission among other things shall identify the law where which are no longer needed or relevant and can be immediately repealed likewise implementation of ucc can be possible or not and getting the feedback from different community as well so this is the spotlight because maximum news covered on the day related to uh, this only okay moving towards pib the government of india is organizing an international conference on green hydrogen during 5th to 7th july at vigyan bhavan what is the purpose of this meeting to bring together all the global scientific policy academic and industrial leaders to discuss the recent advances and emerging technologies in the entire green hydrogen value chain that is the purpose of this meeting okay many stakeholders will participate here in terms of uh, you know innovation driven solution in the sector and strengthening the sustainability ecosystem of the sector that is the purpose of this particular meeting it is going to happen for two days from 5th to 7th july here i just want to give you only one important uh, value added for you what is mean by this green hydrogen okay green hydrogen is a colorless odorless tasteless non toxic okay non toxic and highly combustible gaseous substances it's a lightest simplest and most abundant members of the family of chemical elements in the universe but a color green prefixed to it hydrogen the fuel of the future fuel of the future right so green hydrogen is produced through electrolysis using renewable source of energy such as solar wind or hydro power okay that is the importance of green hydrogen next from all india radio india experiences its warmest june since 1901 says indian meteorological department so indian meteorological department has reported that the country received 10 percentage rainfall last month compared to its lpa that is long period average of 1971 to 2020 so the total rainfall during the pre period was recorded at 148.6 mm as compared to its you know lpa of 165.3 mm so the rainfall is come less and also india experienced its warmest june since 1901 so the last part that is vocabulary uh, flagging the word is flagging the meaning of the word is to become tired or less strong that is known as flagging next word is about communicu communicu you know about communi means like it is about uh, co- conveying your message an official do- statement 
especially from a government a political group that is known as communique then constrained to limit their development or force them to behave in a particular way so we can keep it as limitless like limit not limitless limit constrained so flagging communique constrained these are the three important words for the day right so that's all for the day we'll meet you tomorrow stay tuned thank you